the Cigar Florentino with Michael Cavalieri uh, from our Roots and Reflections podcast, and we're going to be talking about Sicily today. So welcome, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Bob. So, uh, uh, and yes, we, have, uh, we have people from, uh, I guess, probably about nine time zones or something like that. So, all right. Well, let's, let's, first, let's first have everybody... Uh, Say hello, and then give me where their family roots are from, and and who they are, and, and so let's start with Francesca and Manuele. Hi, my name is Francesca Latore, and um, our family is in Gela, Sicily, um, which is on the southwest. Mm, I'd say southwest. Um, in Sicily, my father was born there and came to the U.S. as an adult. And this is my brother, Manuele. Manuele. Ciao, everyone. Nice, nice to see everyone. Good to see you again, Michael. I love you, buddy. Yeah, Manuele. so we're out here. Uh, we're outside of us. Uh, I live outside of San Francisco, but uh, out here we have a vibrant Italian community. As as you know, we had you up here. So, uh, yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. We're, we're very glad to be on your show. Thank you. What, well, why don't you brag about yourself? Because I can brag about you if you want. Yeah. But Manny's uh, well, like, go ahead, Manny. Yeah, tell them what you do over there. Uh, we have a, an Italian uh, athletic club that's uh, 107 years old, right in the heart of San Francisco. Best best neighborhood in the city by far. And yeah. uh, we're just about uh, almost at 1,000 members. And... Wow. Uh, vibrant club we're open daily we have events all the time and we have you know of course our sports teams like our uh our calcio team won the championship again so i gotta gotta plug those guys all right congratulations thank you and, and your position sir uh, i'm the president of the club wow i'm on my boss. second term there you're the boss you're the boss i i answered to you when i came to san francisco you you were the man uh -huh. thank you so much Thank you so much for everything you did for me, by the way. I, my film, Ritonato and La Porta, actually La Porta del Inferno was up there. And uh, Manuel, you just handled it. everything with grace and dignity and respect. And I really appreciate you very much, sir. What you do for our culture, I appreciate you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Jerry, what do we got? So my name is uh, Jerome Jerry Taverna. My uh, father is from... Riesi, Sicily. Uh, my grandfather was a worker, child worker in the sulfur mines, Sicily. Um, and my mother, like Michael, my mother uh, is from a whole different part of Italy. She's from Monopoly, which is just south of Bari. So I uh, grew up kind of taking in both of those dialects. And so when I speak Italian, it's, it's uh, barely, barely understandable. <laughs> well, I can tell you a little bit about Jerry. A little bit since he brought me to Boston to show my film. Jerry, what's the what's the society? Is it the St. Joseph Society you're part of now, or? or? Yeah, that's correct. Long time uh, society, and it came directly from. It was founded actually a hundred years ago. We're going to have a we're organizing a feast for the hundredth anniversary this coming uh, July. Wow, wow, wow! And you do so much for that culture, and I really appreciate you and what your passion for our, our Sicilian culture, Italian culture, because like Manuel and Francesca. You were so generous with your time and with me and really, really helped me. And I really appreciate you. Thank you for being here. We'll talk about your story in a little bit. My Francesco, pleasure. what do we got? Ciao, Michael. Ciao, ciao, Francesco. <laughs> I am Francesco Curione. I live in Sicily. I'm from the best island in the world. Yes, 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 yes. My town is called Collesano, it's uh, 10 minutes too far from Cefalu, 40 minutes too far from Palermo, and I'm so proud to be Sicilian. I am a service provider, I, am, uh, I help Americans to become uh, Italian, I do this with passion, and I like to say most of my clients became my friend because they fall in love with this really beautiful island, uh, Sicily yes. is the place in the world. Yes, yes, it's tremendous. So, so basically you help people find their roots or you help them find their family history and you help them get citizenship exactly the mix between uh, genealogy and citizenship because there is a law that give the possibility that the people who have roots from italy to apply in the consulate or here and get an italian passport wow so, wow 
Yes, yes. If you have an ancestor who was born here and emigrated to the USA or, and never naturalized, never became American citizen, or became American citizen after the son born, you have the right to get a uh, passport that became Italian like me, with my single right. Uh, this is very, very good. But they, Francesca, did they change the laws recently? Uh, I, I was reading some other stuff. Is there new laws based on citizenship? Yes, in both ways, yes. Uh, there is a new law that was approved just uh, two weeks ago, uh, two weeks ago, the 3rd of uh, October. That is not really a new law, if we need to be specific. It's an interpretation of the law. I it's see. The minor issue. Okay. So, Two interpretations say that uh, if uh, your ancestor naturalized uh, when the child was a minor, also if the child born before the naturalization is still considered naturalized like the father. So all the people who are applying right now. Uh, but again, it's still a gray zone situation. The yeah. don't know or proceed right. in Italy because you know. This is something that can happen sometime when the Supreme Court to take a decision. Right now, it's right. just a decision, but maybe it can change. So, you right. get crossed because you Americans deserve to be in Italian. Jerry, tell me a little bit about your uh, your grandfather and your father and what they did and and how we met and the history a little bit. So, you know, I guess briefly, um, this is something that's always been ingrained in our family history. You know, my... Um, my grandparents on my father's side came here in the late fifties. And, you know, we always heard the stories growing up of how my dad would have been about four or five years old during the bombings of Sicily. Mm. And he had pretty vivid memory memories of, of all those times, you know? Um, but my grandmother, uh, really, really, you know, much like most stories like this, a very strong woman. She, um, she had stories of being alone with, I think, three young boys and having to sell uh, wine and bread at night to the American soldiers to, wow. to, in a kind of an exchange for protection and, you know, having them keep an eye on the house for and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but anyways, they came here in the late fifties. And by then my grandfather was, you know, pretty, pretty well worn from his life inside the mines. Um, wow. I just sent Bob a picture we found recently. I found recently in my grandmother's house uh, and he would have been 15 at the time, all dressed up with some young boys, and, you know, included in the picture, obviously, working in the mines, you know. Carusi, Carusi, eh? Yep, and my dad was very passionate about, you know, it's funny, that, and that's the reason I think I got hooked, is he had books all over the house, and he was uh, constantly talking about these stories, uh, and, and showing me the books, and explain, you know, explaining some of that stuff to me, so um, that's kind of how I, I always had that hook. I think everyone gets that really the passion comes in when you get later in life and that's where I am. That's where I am. And, you know, I had come across your, um, your movie, the first one, Ritonato, and, uh, we rented it and we watched it in my, in my dad's backyard and it was a great find and all that. And then since then you had, you had made the second movie. So that's when we kind of, you know, we hooked up, I reached out to you and we, uh, kind of started the coordination process to get it shown down in, in Boston's North end. And what was really cool was we showed it in the basement of St. Leonard's Church, which is 150 year old church, I believe, built by wow. in, built by the immigrants of in large part Sicily, who were denied entry into a lot of those churches in Boston. Wow! They had, no, they had no place to worship, so they built their own church. Wow! 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 Well, you know what? I have much respect for you, your family, as you know, with the film that we did and uh, what those men and boys went through. So. They'll always be superheroes to me, and I I always will carry a piece of my heart to your family with that, and just uh, it, it's incredible Re the resiliency of those men and just Sicilian people and Sicilian men and women in general, just very special. But uh, you know, the uh, last thing the last thing I'll leave you with real quick is is you know my dad had friends all from the same hometown in South Boston. They landed in South Boston, which if you don't know South Boston, it's a very heavily Irish community like very, very insular. And so in the late 50s, early 60s, strewn throughout that area was all these, you know, and imagine the foods they were cooking, right? Because I saw it all. And so, 
So anyways, they, but one of the, one of the families had a really, uh, you know, tragic story in that their grandfather was actually killed in one of the explosions. That yeah. Was always, always in the family lore. And again, it's documented in these books as well. So. Sure. Sure. It's tragic. Yeah. Um, Carlo, we got you. Gene, we got oh, you. holy smokes, Gene Benfanti, Carlo Televiso, welcome yeah. to Sicily. Thank Yay. you. Oh, hey, I, I know him. Gene, so I'm just calling, give me a second. I want to introduce Gene Benfanti, who is in Scranton, Pennsylvania, only because I'm going to connect you with uh, Jerry. Gene, uh, Gene's family is also part of the Supper Minds and part of that story. So, Gene, just uh, give yourself an introduction and a little bit about your family. And I love you, by the way. Well, I know, I know 007. I can see 007 right there. <laughs> um, I'm, I was born and raised in uh, Lackawanna County, Dunmore, Scranton, Pittston, right in the heart of anthracite coal mine. That's, that's the place. Um, Sicilian, one half. Avigliano, Potenza, Basilicata, the other half. Um, and the town that I grew up in, had like basically three camps from Italy. It wow. was it was Sicily, with San Cataldo and uh, Sada di Palco, and it was Gubbio, mm -hmm. uh, and it was um, the other uh, Potenza. So mm -hmm. it was just Italian. Right, 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 uh, right. I, I just recently found out that my ancestors not only were they coal miners but they started in the silver mines of sicily i was shocked i, I had no idea that some of them actually worked the mines on both continents so it was like it blew my mind but uh so learning about um the sulfur mines in sicily and um uh la porta del inferno oh that was like a game changer for me so now Wow, well, well, you're beautiful. <laughs> what a passionate soul. Great artist, by the way. Also, yeah, I, just an amazing artist. artist. Yeah. Wow. Gene, yeah. Gene, thank you again for taking me to Scranton. Let me come there and present my film. You, uh, you, you may, you were, it was such a buzz the next day. You. It was, everyone was like, oh my gosh, where are we going to get this DVD? We have to have him come back. We have to, we have to talk more about this. So everybody was talking about it. So. Oh, it's all of us together. We're going to try to make a difference. Carlo. Hello, yeah, my friend. Fantastic for you. How are you? Nice to meet you, sir. Sorry it took so long to get you in here. Tell us a little bit about your handsome self. No problem. Yes. Hi, I'm Carlo Treviso, author of the novel Siciliana. Um, I was actually born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. My dad, uh, my dad's family came from Porticello, Sicily back in the 70s. Sure. So they immigrated to Milwaukee. That's where I was born. Uh, I'm from a family of carpenters and shipwrights. So my Nanu built boats. Wow, that's yeah. great. That's great. That's fantastic. Um, so tell how many times you've been to Sicily? Actually, I've only been once. Uh, <laughs> Ten years ago. Yeah, my first time was on a tour. Wait, so, Francesco, uh, what do you say about that? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. These are beautiful places. You need to stay here longer. <laughs> you can go to the best lunch together. I'm Fisolange. The best offer <laughs> ever is in Santa Lia for together. Wow, you see that? Carlo? He knows everything. That's amazing. He's a, yeah, he's a he's a tour guy. He also does genealogy. Gene, he's a genealogist. He knows Absolutely. everything. Absolutely. He's, he's amazing. 007. He's the 007 <laughs> of genealogy. That's who he um, is. <laughs> I have a I want to ask Manny and Francesca. I think Manny, you explained the story about your father to me. I I I, I don't want I, how tough of Manny was. And it kind of worked that he did. Can you give me a little bit of a story about your father? He wants it. Uh, yeah, so my dad uh, was born in, in Sicily, obviously, during World War II. Um, and uh, he, grew, he grew up in Jello, which was uh, the, the key entry point of uh, Operation Husky. So it was a major battle there with uh, where Patton and the U.S. Uh, allied invade, uh, invaded uh, southern Italy. And... Um, from uh, from there, he he then immigrated as a young man over to uh, America in his twenties. And uh, wow! And, yep. Wow. Tell me tell me that story about your father. Though you were in a tough neighborhood growing up, I want to hear that oh, story yeah. a little bit. Francesca, <laughs> tell me that story. Um. Well, yes, we we grew up in Oakland, California. Um. Very wow. very 
a rough neighborhood and my father didn't drive so he would catch the bus he worked in san francisco at an italian restaurant <laughs> and yeah because that way he didn't everyone that worked there was italian so he didn't have to learn the language so my father right. never really had a grasp of uh, the english language not not a good one right and right. so um he would come home at night and walk from the bus stop home and one night um there was a bunch of commotion and it was past my bedtime but i ran out in the kitchen to see what was going on and apparently he had been um jumped by two guys that were trying to rob him wow. and they had a knife and they they his leather jacket got cut up but they didn't get anything from him he had them running wow wow <laughs> typical sicilian man right <laughs> oh yeah so so yeah. Guys, I'm going to ask this question to everybody. I think it's interesting. So do you still think there's a bias between the North and the South as far as the way the people look at uh, Northern Italy and, and all, the South and, and also Sicily Island? Uh, we can start with Jean and we'll work our way around to Jerry and to Frances. Jean first. Well, my experience has been growing up with mostly Southern Italian people. So I didn't really come across uh, that um, the difference between the North and the South uh, so much. Just looking at genealogy today, though, it's it's interesting how even on the, the passenger list, you were yep. either the North or the yep. South. So, like, yep. decisions were made the second you you stepped off the boat. Yes. And, and, and um, just all the reading that I've been doing, now I, I see it, but I never experienced that because I was surrounded by Southern Italians. Right. Okay. From all areas, but you know, I, on Sicily and the mainland too. Okay, Jerry. I just have a funny story about that. I was at a feast here in the South Shore of Boston recently, and uh, Hull has has mostly Calabrians. Hull. In in where I live here, south of Boston, and at this feast, there's one whole side where all the Calabrians would go, and you know, I joke with one of the younger guys who's about 25. <laughs> And this is what they're taught. They were taught, literally, this is a 25 year old kid told me this. They were taught that their ancestors struck down and defeated the Sicilians from the hills of Calabria. <laughs> and I said, you know, this is, this is not true, right? You know, because no, they're peasants true. and they're, they're worthless and all this kind of stuff. So right, I think right. it's still there to a certain extent. But you see some, uh, uh, the Netflix show uh, recently done um, from scratch, showed a little bit of that. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Francesco, you, you, as somebody who's doing the tours and all that stuff, do you see any kind of, um, bias towards North and the South or what people say, or, or when people come, is there a different perspective when somebody comes to Sicily and ex an expectation of something that could be, you know? But in my opinion, uh, as in general, I like to say that, uh, we feel a Sicilian before feel Italian, uh, because, you know, Sicily in the past had so many domination, uh, Arab, uh, Greek, uh, Big, Brazil. Uh, so we have uh, the own culture, the own dialect. Uh, so for us, it's like really the flag of Sicily is more important sometimes than the flag of Italy. Right, so right. Yes, when the people come to the Manchester uh, town here in Sicily, they are so happy because uh, they start to, to see the story of uh, the grandmother of uh, the grandmother who stood there. Uh, because uh, I like to say that, that sometimes people ask me why my family lives in Sicily. It's so right. beautiful here. You have right. everything. You have the sun, you have the beach, you have the food. Why? Because in the past, the people were very, very poor. So they had right. to say hello at the family and was on, on uh, hello forever because they go in another state. And they don't have any technology. Now we have right. everything. We have stuff. We have this Zoom uh, chat. In the past, they send a letter, and maybe the letter never arrived. Right, right. And that's I like to help these people uh, because they really want to reconnect the past with the present of the story of the family. Yeah. I like to okay. say that they are very, very proud of the situation uh, yeah. because. Uh, if they are, today are able to do the trip in the reverse way, it's thanks to the strong work of these people. Where yeah. do you stay for trying to give them better life uh, at the future generation? Now, 
go to a safe and durable, but uh, in the past, people go to a safe of work. Mm. Right, or right. Yes, whatever, right. of life. So right. this making me, make me enjoy my job uh, because uh, when people live here, uh, they want to invest, they want to buy property. They say that it's time for me to give something back to my motherland. Absolutely. I agree. I, I, that's why I do all the work that I'm doing. Manny, Manny and Francesca, I want to ask this question. Um, how do you feel about the stereotypes in, about Italians in cinema, in movies and TV? Well, it's unfortunate. Um, I, I believe, you know, the, the mafia has been overplayed. Um, and it, it's more so I think they, they, they put that on to Sicily and Sicilians than people from Northern Italy. Um, and some of that may have went on, but it wasn't the whole, your whole life didn't revolve, not everybody's life was touched by it, you know, so why, I mean, it, it sells though, it sells and that's why Hollywood does it. Um, what it doesn't show is, is the tremendous pride and the tremendous family connections and, and how, you know, open and accepting um, Sicilians are yeah. of everyone. Yeah, yeah. Where I didn't, I would say I, I didn't really feel as open and accepted in Northern Italy as, as I do when I'm in Sicily. Right, 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 right. Manny? Yeah, you know, uh, you know how it goes. Uh, the Sicilian side of, of Italy never gets the focus of art, culture, and all the beautiful things. They seem to get the negativity. But uh, we're all working hard to, to, to change that perception, right? And yep. uh, I think it's working. I think it's turning around in Sicily, and you're starting to see a little more uh, tourism going down there. And uh, I think this is the start of a renaissance, at least we've noticed when, in Jella. There's a lot of, uh, you know, rehabilitation to the old buildings and, and, and a lot of new stuff going on. So right. it right. uh, warms our heart to see Jella turning around and, and uh, yeah. We will be returning at some point also. <laughs> yeah. G uh, Carlo, how do you feel about that? Yeah, so I mean, um, growing up, so I'm first generation born here in America. And even growing up, when I would tell people about my Sicilian heritage, one of the first things I would hear usually is some nod to like the Godfather or like, you know, <laughs> hey, Don Carlo, hey. It's like that was kind of always the first yeah, uh, yeah. touch point that people associated with Sicily. So I still right. think. I mean, maybe it's changing now, but I still think it's the mafia, you know, <sighs> still kind of prevalent in people's minds. You know, it's funny. I've been I've been traveling around the country with my films, and and uh, you know, I was an actor for a long time, and in, in, uh, in Hollywood, and and I left because I just didn't want to deal with the way that they depicted our culture generally. Just it was always the mafia, it was always the thug, it was always the not intelligent person, and. Uh, but I have to say this, I think part of it's our fault, not us personally, but our culture's fault. I think somewhere along the line, we dropped the ball. We allowed this to happen. We perpetuated bad movies, bad stereotypes. Um, I think we didn't pay enough. We didn't, uh, what's the word I want to use? We didn't uh, take care of our culture the way we should have. You know, we should have did things to really, really usher in certain things. And I feel like now that's why we're all trying to come together to try to reimagine and restate this is who we are. You know, from the books, from your beautiful book to Gene's art, from Manny's work, Jerry, all of us, Francesco, all of us try, Bob, we're trying to bring back the real positive portrayal of, of, uh, of who we are and, and some, of the, some of the human stories. And there's so many, I've come across in my travels in Sicily, a countless amount of heroes that I've talked to personally, men that I wish that I could be half like. When I look at some of the people that I've interviewed and spent time with, um, I feel very, very blessed and fortunate. And, and uh, in America, sometimes I don't think we recognize that. I think we're a little bit uh, out of touch. I don't know how anybody else feels about that, but that's how I feel. Bob? Uh, yeah, no, no, I, I agree. And I, I think uh, 
you know, especially when we were there in Sicily, um, it was, like Francesco said, it was so beautiful. I mean, you, you drive around, you drive around the island and you, you look to the right and there's the sea and you look to the left and there's the mountains. Uh, and, uh, you know, every place that we went was just so, so great. But I want to go back to, to um, uh, Carlo for a second, because he wrote a historical novel about Sicily uh, and the, the uprising against the French, which I found absolutely fascinating because there were things in there that about Sicily that I had no idea about. Uh, and for people who want to get a sense of what it was like in Sicily, you know, 800 years ago, read Siciliana, right? Well, Carl, give us a, yeah, give us a little insight into that. Well, the, the novel Siciliana uh, is based on an event called the Sicilian Vespers Uprising. It took place in the year 1282. Uh, when the Sicilian people actually rose up against the French occupation that essentially dominated dominated the island at that time. And allegedly, you know, it's, it was started by a young woman who pulled out her blade and stabbed a French soldier, crying death yeah. to the <laughs> And yeah. that sparked the broader rebellion. There are, there are actually very, there are conflicting accounts of how this happened, but I chose to focus on the young woman's story just because that had the most drama, in my opinion. Um, but again, like back to the idea of changing stereotypes, I feel like it all does start with history, understanding our history, understanding the various conquerors that kind of, you know, took over Sicily over time from the Normans to the Arabs to the Romans. There are so many eras in Sicily that are, that are go beyond just the mafia, right? So sure. I think as people if start to study the history, you can start finding those examples of heroism and courage and Sicilian heart, which I like, which I focused on in my book. Right, right, right. So that's it's true. I mean, that's what I'm saying. The more you delve into it, the more you read about it, the more people you meet, the more stories you hear. So congratulations on that beautiful book. Everybody should buy the book. Carlo, say it again. Siciliana, a novel. Right. From a woman to a woman's a woman hero. About time. So my last name is Cugnone. So when oh, I oi, oi. myself to USA, people say. Mr. Corleone. Of course. It's a little bit funny, but bad at the same time, because it's the stereotype of the mafia. Right. But uh, I like to say that now, in Sicily, it's different. Uh, the mafia still exists, uh, and it's a problem. But uh, it's not anymore uh, the old man with the hat, the gun on the back. Now the mafia is the corruption, it's the politics, and it's sure. hard to find. Right. Is but a lot of, we have but a I, lot of people who fight uh, for give a new perspective in Sicily. Yeah. Just uh, if you remember, every time you land in Sicily, the name of the airport is Falcone Borsellino. These two judges were born in Palermo and they used to play with the big future mafia boss, Tommaso mm -hmm. Pichetta, Tommaso mm -hmm. Rina, Salvatore mm -hmm. Provenzano. Mm -hmm. They take a different way. They study law. They give the life for this land. And now in the school, the kids study the story, and they know they are people. Right, they right. They never died because they continue to die now. So let's remove the stereotype of the mafia. Okay, but I think, but I, but I think that's the problem. Uh, it's not even it's just Sicily. It's American because the Americans are so get get, get caught up in stereotypes, and we make movies about that. And I, I think they're the ones that are perpetuating it. Not even it's not Sicily's American mindset and the, and the commercial of films is perpetuating the mafia, the Godfather, Corleone. You know, it was, it was, it, as I always say this: the Godfather was the greatest movie of all time, probably. But everything else that they try to make like it is horrible and becomes stereotypical. But people start to keep making things like this and, and they start to believe that this is who we are. So it, it's really the issue of the filmmakers and, and the people who, it's like an Italian actor, you know, you don't have to do this part. You don't have to do it. You have to make a choice, you know, do I want to perpetuate this terrible stereotype or do I want to stand with dignity with my culture? So, you know. I, I think, um, um one of the keys to that is people doing their own genealogy and they learn about the history of what was happening at the time and why they made the decisions that they made and 
um, like just that alone has just opened my eyes to what being a Sicilian is really about. I mean, I, I was, once I got over, you know, the whole black hand being in my town and all of the stories that I used to hear, then I started to focus on the individual families and what they went through and the women who lost the children right. one yes. after another. And they, uh, they gathered everything they could to come here. I keep going back to the, the, the movie, uh, The Golden Door, mm -hmm. which is just like the Sicilian family coming and, and coming across the, the ocean and uh, what they gave up, mm -hmm. which was really absolutely nothing because they had mm -hmm. nothing, but they just had such hope. And I think right. people start to look at their own family, their own genealogy and do that research. They're like, oh, well, we're more than food and the mafia. Sure. Absolutely. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Anybody else there on that? So I think yeah, the Godfather as a story was well intentioned, right? Like it's very, mm -hmm. it was very sincerely told. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mari Puzo obviously is a brilliant author, but mm -hmm. I think it just goes to show you what the power of entertainment, you know, it, yeah. it was a, it was a good book. It was a good movie, but it, mm -hmm. it focused on a very, very small slice of Sicilian history, right? Mm -hmm. And that yeah. became a powerhouse of popular culture and that's what people gravitate towards. So it Absolutely. goes back to the idea that we need to keep telling our stories, mm -hmm. uh, getting them out there in new ways and mm -hmm. hope to shift that popular culture mindset to a, a different kind of lens. Absolutely. Education, yeah. you know, education yeah. is an important thing. Go ahead. Manny and Francesca, I think you guys wanted to jump in. Yeah? Um, I just wanted to say that I actually just read that book, uh, Siciliana, like uh, about a month ago. And um, it was very interesting. I really liked it and it was very interesting to know that it was based on an actual event that happened. Um, the uh, Vespers of Palermo, I, it was, you know, I went and did some research about that afterwards. So, you know, I knew that, you know, they were very poor in Sicily. I mean, my family wasn't rich by any means. Um, and also with Michael's um, film, uh, La Porta del Inferno, um, the quote that he had in the beginning from Booker T. Washington, uh, I did a deep dive after watching the film to find out what the condition of the people were in Sicily in the early 1900s when Booker T. Washington went to go visit. And he wrote five chapters in his book about it. And so I did a deep dive after that. Um, and, you know, it's it's what you were saying about education is important but in a way it kind of has it's putting people in a situation in sicily right now where we have all these these young adults that are going to universities and getting educated and then coming back to sicily and not being able to find a job yeah um and Absolutely. people are people are going away from their traditions of like, um, we were, you know, we grew fruit and we sold fruit, we were fruit vendors. You know, um, no one wants to do that manual labor anymore. I mean, they right. still do it, you still see it, you can still buy your fruit from the Lapa that comes down the street, announcing with a speaker, <laughs> you know, in Jella, they still do it. So you yeah. can still buy all your fruit and everything like that. But now that people, the younger generation is more educated, um, it's going to go away it, because people are not going to keep that, that up once they're educated. Like my father um, only had a third grade education because at that time in Sicily, um, you had to get started working like when you were young to try to help the family mm -hmm. and so uh, my father wasn't a big guy either and i remember um he eventually was a barber out there but at first he was working making bricks wow. and everybody was telling my grandmother and grandfather you got to get him out of there because he's he's not built for that he's not mm -hmm. built for that type of manual labor um, he actually eventually became a barber, and they're still in that in Jela. 
there's still barbers that are still working there that remember my father that actually worked with him when he was learning. Um, he only, like I said, he only had a third grade education, but he was one of the smartest people I, I ever knew. I don't know what they were teaching them in the third grade in Sicily, but it was not what, we're lear what we learned here in America, so. Absolutely. Jerry, dark in the, the dark in the bowels back there in Boston, I can see you barely, but tell me something. Uh, you know, I, I think um, you got you make a lot of great points about the, the Godfather. It's funny, that's, I remember being 16 years old watching that movie and hearing the Sicilian language and, and it just clicked that that's my, that's my family. Wait a minute. Yeah. I understand every single, you know, intently, but the other point I wanted to make was I think the Sopranos more recently oh, boy. has had such an impact. I mean, that a lot of people call that the greatest TV show ever made. So, you know, that's had a tremendous impact as well, just to really, you know, carry it along to, to more, uh, you know, deeper depths. So, you know, the thing about it's funny because, you know, being an actor in this, in this crazy industry and you, I would go out for auditions, you know, I have a college degree. I have actually two degrees. And, you know, all the, every, every part was, you know, this or that. I'm like, you know, I don't, I might, my agent used to get mad at me. Why do you want, I said, I don't want to do that. But you got to work. I said, not like that. So I would go off and do some really beautiful films. And, and it didn't have to be Italian films. It could be any, but they were family films about a story. And, you know, if you have a family, it doesn't matter if you're Sicilian, this, this, and that. It's a family story. So what I'm trying to say is there's so many other things to do and to talk about with our culture. There's so many beautiful uh, artists and sculptors and, and musicians and, and family stories and personal stories that could be told. And, and I think this is the things that we have to push ourselves to do. And Carlo writes a book. Gene does a beautiful sculpture. Manny runs the great, you know, San Francisco Italian American club. Jerry, Jerry learns about his father being a Caruso, a grandpa. You know, it's like, this is, this is what we're meant to do. And if it's not us, if we don't do this, it goes away. So what I've done, and it's been really, really inspiring to me, is that I've met a lot of young kids all over Sicily, all over America. And to me, it's really not about, even if it's not about Sicily, it's about your own, who, whatever your family's from, whatever that is. But you need to learn, you need to know who you are. And I think it, it, what I would like to emphasize to people out there, if you are Sicilian or if you're Italian or if you're something else, like Gene said earlier, you got to find out who you are, where your family comes from, what they went through to get here. It's an important thing because it really informs you and it changes your life in a lot of ways. When I went to Sicily, I had just lost my mother, my father, and my sister. I was very, very lost. And I was very close to my grandfather, extremely close, like you all are, I'm sure, or were. And uh, I was looking for, you know, I was looking to get back in touch with myself. And the only way I could understand how to do that was to try to talk to my grandfather, who wasn't alive. So when I went back to Sicily for the first time and I saw the sign of Limina, which is Fran Francesca, that's that sign up there behind me, I broke down in tears. That's a, that's a going into uh, something I wanted to ask for Jeff over because I think it's important, especially with the work that he does. So Francesco, we know how we feel when we come to Sicily and we come to Italy and we go to the hometown. What are the what are the two two questions? It's almost the same question. How do the Sicilian people feel when we visit, and what's your experience with the Americans when they visit? Oh my God, we love it. We love it for so many reasons. Because first of all, each one of us has some member of family when we the USA. My family, for example, is in Long Island, in New York. So. Uh, we have cousin, uncle. So when Americans are living in town, we are super happy to welcome these people. Also, remember that uh, American soldier in the Second World War <coughs> helped the Italians uh, to build in the democracy. So they give the freedom. We were uh, during the fascist time. Arrived this young soldier. Andrew in this town, my grandmother still remembers this young soldier who gave chocolate to the locals. So when now I read so far in town, we are super happy to work. Just yesterday, I went to this Manchester town called the Delta It's a small town in the middle of nowhere in Sicily. But when the client arrived, 
sports welcome and like she was many more. The yeah. mayor literally stopped the work in the office for <laughs> talk with me on the street. We yeah. went to knock knock to the door of some family member for try to connect the woman with some family. And we did. Wow. We did. One minute she, she came from Palermo with the driver. The driver said, Oh, you can stay only two hours. In the end, she said, Six hours. Wow. <laughs> we really was invited to in try to get out of most travel life. Right. You are That's beautiful. Like a stranger and uh, like a magic, uh, you are sitting and you enjoy pasta with the waters. <laughs> Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, and I was I was lucky because I was there with my Sicilian wife, so I got treated. Lucky. You are very lucky, Bob. You're part Sicilian. <laughs> You're very lucky. I wouldn't be doing this podcast with you. But th- honestly, just to get back, because Bob cut me off. Here. I don't know why he did that. I was very emotional at that moment. But no, um, just you were going to cry. You know, I, I, I can't. I can't I, I, Gene, Gene knows me. I cry a lot. I can't help it. I'm Sicilian. Um, but no, I just wanted to just say that for anyone who goes back or hasn't gone back yet. Gene, Gene, um, that the the feeling you get when you lay your feet on the land of your grandparents or your grand or your ancestors will change your life forever. That's all I can tell you. And not only the feeling when when you get off the plane and you're in Sicily, you can smell it in the air. It's yeah, a, baby. It's, it smells different. Yeah, yeah, it's the greatest. It's I the would, greatest. Just to see the names of the people that I feel like I know now, um, doing all the research and, and attaching documents to people's wow. profiles, I feel like I know them. I know their their stories. They're like the basic stats of them. But yeah. to see their names, like even in, in a graveyard, just yeah. on the stone, to be able to touch that person's yeah. stone yeah. is just. I know it, it's powerful. It's yeah. mind blowing, and you know, it's it's like. I don't know for everybody else, but for me, it's like it, my whole life changed. Boom. Yeah. I, I just went crazy. I just couldn't take it anymore. So it's just, uh, it's, uh, I just want to implore people out there who are listening to the show, go back, go back, go back to where your family's from, to Sicily, to Italy, please find your roots. Paul Francesco, go back because we need, we need, we need people to understand who we are. We need to have passionate people. You know, there's some there's amazing, amazing people out there, and uh, you need to know who you are. Bob, you have another question? Oh, what is that? Yeah, what, is, what is your favorite Sicilian dish, Francesco? Oh. Do, you, do you remember mine, Francesco? Say again. Do you remember my favorite Italian, my favorite Sicilian dish? Arancini. Arancini, of course. Arancini. What kind? A regular cheese arancini, Bob, or just uh, what kind? Peas. Wow. Meat. No, no, the peas and meat. The peas and meat. That's my favorite. And and uh, Jerry, what's yours? So it's definitely I I, I consider arancini a side dish. So if you me talk too. About me it, too. Yeah. yeah. If you talk about a dish, I don't know. It's a tough one. You know, we had them all. My my, my dad would regularly have a rabbit cook for himself and sit in the middle of the table. A rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> With a little beady eyes staring at you, right? Oh my man. Oh, man. Manny, what do you got? Who's your favorite? Man, I have to go with Panele. Wow. Yes. Wow. I agree. Wow. <laughs> Panele mixed with the potato. Oh my God. It's, wow, I mean, that's good. You can't beat it. And you can't find it as good as you as as over there. Out no, here. You, have it, you can have it in a in a in a uh, the sandwich, sandwich, right? Yeah, in the sandwich, yeah. In the sandwich. The, with wow. the bread still warm at the bakery that's the third, fourth generation baker that we go to. What did you say, Francesco? Somebody was so brave to try the spleen sandwich, the panino con la milka. Oh, spleen sandwich. We're in Palermo? Uh, uh, Francesco, in Palermo, there's a, there's a street food, right? The street oh, food is that, is that tripe? Yeah. The guy has the white sack and he reaches in and he slaps it on the tripe. Yeah, he's calling the fried cola. Uh, he's so many things that no one know what he is. Oh, he, he puts the hands and your hand and yeah. takes it and, and puts it on the thing. Yeah, I'm not sure that's anything, but I, it's probably brain and everything else in there too. What is in that? <laughs> you sure? I don't know exactly what it is. We don't. I can't trust those guys at Palermo to tell me what I'm eating. Is this food you like or you ate? There is no exactly. 
Carlo, what about you? Yeah, well, uh, like you said, if you go into the Pallaro market, uh, you can find everything you want from the exactly. panel. And like uh, Francesco said, the smell that's the smell of season. You really enjoy, you feel what, But uh, one second, Carlo, what's the name of the market in Palermo, by the way? Bacca, Bacca, uh, Pallaro, Uccidia, yeah. Capo, Arte 3, Famous One. Is that the Quattro, Quattro Conto over there in that area? Carlo, what do you got? I would 100% say Pinelli as well. Um, first time I had it, I remember I was a kid, don't remember what age, but we had them every year at Christmas Eve. So I had no idea they were chickens wow. at that time. Right? So they were just these golden, fried, beautiful creations that just blew my mind when I first had them as a <laughs> child. Wow. And so wow. I have a very personal connection to them. But if we're going to call them a side dish, because those are probably also considered side dishes. I got to be honest. I would say that my favorite dish would then be pasta with peas. That's really good, too. Is that original Siciliano, though, Francesco? Pasta Pizzelli? Really? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Siciliano is pasta con le sarde. Pasta con sarde, right? Now, I don't know if pasta Pizzelli is Siciliano, no? This is more Sicilian. Uh, okay. Pasta, pasta is Yeah. <laughs> Francesca, and you? Um, I actually, my favorite is patedra, uh, frito, fried with onions. And it's in Italian. I didn't even know that that's not how you say it. In Italian, it's called tellini. And they are little tiny clams. And you get them fresh. People sell them on the street. Um, they they take a net and they drag the the beach, you know, in the water. Sure, they sure. attach it to themselves, and um, I've eaten them raw right out of the uh, right out of the sea. But they're not baby clams; they're a specific species of clam that's they small, speak very tiny. They speak Sicilian. <laughs> oh yeah. Gene, what about you? Gene. Anything involving bread. All right. So Anything. okay, okay, okay. What about Francesco? You know Tenerumi? Yes, I know Tenerumi. Like pasta Tenerumi. Ah, ah. What about Cardoon? What about Cardoon? Tenerumi is a kind of green. Like ah, zucchini flower from the zucchini. My fa my favorite pasta. Oh wow! I could when I was in Sicily because my grandfather used to have it. Also Cardoon. You know Cardoon? Si, Cardoon. Si. Si. My grandfather used. To my grandfather used to go to the cemetery and rip, pick them out of the cemeteries because it was, and he would bring them home. Exactly. Everything from the, for sure we don't eat the fettuccine alfredo. I never no. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't even understand these people with this fettuccine. I don't get it. But anyway. And what about the cookie for Christmas? You tell me you make the cookie or something like that? Oh, fish. Fish, 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 fish. Good, fish. All, all fish. I have to ask Francesco, what's his favorite American food? Pizza. I, I like, I love steak. I love <laughs> steak. I love prime rib with the big potatoes. <laughs> prime rib. <laughs> it's a oh, Sicilian, oh, yeah. Sicilian cowboy. Sicilian cowboy. Like, you're from Argentina, Sicilian. What is that? <laughs> I, I like By the way, the... Francesca, did you know that the, the, the sauce in America, the uh, the meat and pasta together in America is from Argentina, right? Did you know that? The no, rye from Argentina. Yeah. Sicilians, who are Argentinian Sicilians, came to America and they bring a lot of meat. So that's how that whole dish started. Okay, okay. We should look that up. That's okay. history. That... <laughs> I know you like cannoli, but me, I like to try the American breakfast with the French toast, the pound cake. Uh, I like the peanut butter jelly. Oh my god, so you're actually American, Francesca. You're American for God's sake. You're from Scranton, Pennsylvania. What are we talking to you for? You're in Chefalu. I have a, I have a very dear friend of mine coming to uh from Piazza Marina. He's coming with his kids the first time to America. He's a tour guide, he's in Piazza Armina, he's one of the best tour guides in the country, and it's his first time to America. And it's funny because he doesn't, you know. Financially, he has no idea what this is about here because you know you can rent an apartment in Piazza Armerina for three hundred fifty dollars a month. Oh. So, so he well, comes here. You know, he's <laughs> so he's coming here like Disney tickets alone for two kids is like twelve hundred dollars. Oh, the poor guy. 
And, you know, he's got to rent the car and he's got to do this and he's got to do that. And I said, Rosario, you're going to have to sell your house in Sicily to come for a week. But anyway, I'm excited to show him and his children a little bit of the American way. Uh, a little breakfast, a little this, a little that, because they've never been here. So it's really exciting for me to um, repay the favor that he did for me, because when I went to Piazza Marina with my film, this is what I'm talking about with Sicilian people, how special they are. But when I went and uh, he, he gave me his house, he gave me his car. Oh, wow. Michael, you take whatever you want, be whatever you want, do, gave me this, gave me that. He became like my brother. And uh, he's one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. And I, I just, I want to, this is what it should be. We should return the favor that we give, that they give to us. We bring them back to us and we return that favor. So I think this is a great way to start a great touristic thing. You know, switch, switching people over. We come to you, you come to us. And you give them the American way and they give us the Sicilian way, right? Absolutely. True. I agree. So, <laughs> you want to go to, you want to go to cocktail hour in Beverly Hills. What the hell's going on here? Did you know, Francesco, in, in Sicily, in, uh, in, in, in Los Angeles, there's a, the brothers, the Drago brothers. Did you ever hear of the Drago brothers? No. So they're from, uh, they're from Messina. They own 15 restaurants here in, in Los Angeles. 15 okay. Sicilian restaurants. Very, very successful. Very, very successful people. My wife works at one of the restaurants. So they try the best they can to, to do, to keep it Sicilian. But unfortunately... Everything gets Americanized in some way or form because people don't understand how to deliver the food or they don't know how to cook the food a certain way. There's obviously not Sicilians in the kitchen, so it's yeah. a different mentality, you know, but it's not as authentic, but they try, you know, they try. Um, I want to the best Sicilian food in the USA. If you want the, a good cannoli, you need to come to Palermo. Exactly. Yeah. I'll tell you what the best cannoli I've ever had in my life. Where? You're not going to It's not Palermo. Say it. Uh -oh. Where? Yeah, the no. In Lipari. In Lipari. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Pistachio. One of the greatest canoes ever. It was incredible. Have you been to Ireland Islands, Francesco? Of course. No. Anybody else? Anybody else here? Lipari, Alicuti, Panarea, Stromboli. Stromboli is a crazy volcano. It's incredible. I don't know if anybody else has been to the islands, but it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Francesca Manny, no? You know, I've been I've been to Sicily 17 times, and I that's all I went to was Jella. <laughs> no, I Francesca, help me island. out! Come on. <laughs> I I travel around the island to different cities, but never to the islands. And I I do plan on doing it though. Manny, will you please go to the islands for God's sakes? Hey, we have plans to, to, to hit all of them, believe me. <laughs> but we're so, going to definitely have to connect with Francesco when we go back. Because uh, you're, you're right by Shepalu. We got to be, we, we went to Shepalu last year. Wow, fantastic. Is it true, Francesco, um, Cinema Paradiso, did they shoot some of the scenes in uh, Shepalu, no? It's Cinema Paradiso. Yeah. Beautiful movie. Yeah. I did. One of my favorite we, films of all time. Yeah. We just we just watched we just watched the the Lions of uh, Sicily. Very oh, nice. And and I mean, we're watching Francesco, we're watching, and I and I said when we see the port, and I said to my wife, I said, that's Chippewa. And she yeah. said, No, it's I don't think I said, No, that's Chippewa. I I know, I know, I know. Did you ever see did you ever see the original with Burt Lancaster? No, that's, that, well, that's a different. That's a different one. The, no, that's the. One. No, it's, it's no, the original movie of that. Yeah, yeah, it's right. That's yeah. right. By the way, both of the two movies talk about the story of the Nobles family in Sicily. Yes. And the Orio family was one of the most smart business people ever. Really, they start uh, with uh, the pharmacy, then it became a sulfur, then uh, the yeah, Florio so was a Florio a family, no? Oh, that's a true story. I didn't the know Flo the Florio story. family, right? Yes, the Florio family. It's a true story. Right? It's oh, I didn't know that. So, in, yeah, in my in my film, 
yeah, it might, yeah, yeah, the Florida, but you know, they also did some bad things. Yeah. I hate to say it. So they were the ones that perpetuated the sulfur mines. Yes, yes. They, they were the head, yeah. Along with the padrones and people like that, they were bringing in to run the sulfur mines. So, so just so we're on the right side of history, so we know they did some great things, but they also did some not so great things. I just want to say that. Kind of business and they have a big factory, they give job, but at the same time, they lose people. Exactly. It's hard. It's unfortunate, but this is the world we, and it's happening today as well. By the way, but, I um, have a nice story about the sulfur mine because this year, uh, Michael, I help one client to become Italian citizen in Tanchester town at his Lercara bridge. Guess what? I'm in the USA in Florida. Yeah, I would, yeah. Oh. for mine. This year, they reopened the suit for mine just for one day for, for give the possibility to see what was the life in the past. Wow. And the mayor gave him the possibility to be the first one who can go inside the suit for mine. So it was very emotional because the grandfather used to work, then right. he emigrated to stay, changed the life, he became a firefighter, and now he's going back to the same place where the grandfather used to work. Uh, mm -hmm. I need to show you the photo, I need to show you the video. Please send it to me. Yes, you will love you can uh, I would love that. Where is uh which what sulfur mine, Francesca? Left okay. Cara free. Oh, in Pelham. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, because it's they're they're everywhere. They're everywhere. All the Carafriti. They're all all over the Sicily. Yeah. Me too. I've been inside. I went down. Me too. It was awful. Awful. Yes. Awful experience. They stay are in a strange position, and they used to send the kids for work because they are little, so they can fit better. When you arrive down, there is some sort of strong smell. Lose. Yeah, it's a it's a terrible uh, and, and family here that we have people Gene and Jerry and, and the families that have been affected by this. It's uh, it's a eye opening experience to hear and and to learn about what these young Carusi and and men yes. and boys had to deal with endure. My film depicts that in a very 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 uh, deep way, and. Uh, those men and you know the, the families that have suffered that have been incredible. I, I went down into the sulfur mines myself. Um, to think that somebody goes down two thousand feet into the earth with no food, naked, at ten years old, twelve yeah. years old, ca carrying up eighty pounds of sulfur on their backs. Um, if anybody wants to learn a little bit about that, they can write to me on my Facebook page, Messenger uh, about my film La Porta del Inferno. We've been showing it around the world, but. It still goes on today, and, and people are still working in these terrible conditions. So it never stop. We need to learn. This is a socioeconomic lesson because not only it's it stopped in Sicily, you just moved to another country. Wherever yes. there's poverty, wherever there's poverty, things like this happen. Mm -hmm. So the message is still fresh in the world. We have to keep giving education to the world, and we got to help these people, please, whatever we can do. But Francesca, anyway, do you have uh, do you have a, uh, any clips of that person visiting? uh the the mine in lakari free yes, yes can you post I that like on... and the more important i take a video of the last old man alive in town who was the last of kids who used to work and the people ask a question to him like uh, uh, they want to know and he mm. said this is for me today we are reopening the this uh, super mine but for me, this was the most bad moment of my life. Mm. And, I up, and I remember what I had to do. And I had to, because my family was big, we, we were seven kids, and we need to support the family. I lost one brother in this super mine. Incredible. There are no way for describe what I see. And thanks God I record so I can share to you my yes video and uh, you will have a better idea Otherwise, i come uh, matter of fact i want to come there myself when i come to sicily you and i will go there and we'll we bring can it, go i bring we my i want to bring my film to those people i think i want to i would like to show I my like film there say that they reopened the super mine 
for an example for the next generation. Yes. You are lucky. Your family in the past had to do, do this for support to you. So think before do wrong stuff in your life. Absolutely. Good for you. Good for you. Exactly. This is what we're all trying to do here. Bob, we have any other questions? Get that other? one from from uh, from Rich. Do you think they'll they're gonna build that bridge across the straits? Uh Rich. I don't know, Rich. I don't think it's I a good know. idea. I, Francesca, do you think gonna uh, from Messina okay. from Calabria? I don't think so. Me, I don't I think. like to say that that's Sicily is an, an island. So Me you too. arrive with the boat. But <laughs> Or I swim, no. <laughs> swim, it's more political. Uh, I don't Is think it? they never will make the bridge. Yeah, I, I agree. The iconic plate that, that, that runs down the, the middle. So I think that would be like a scientific problem, wouldn't it? Because that tectonic, it? I, I believe there's a tectonic plate that runs right down the strait. If I'm not mistaken, I might be mistaken. Yeah, it's a big mechanical problem. Trust me, we don't want. To... <laughs> yeah. It's very close. The land shake all the time, so it's not really a good idea to building a big bridge close to a volcano. Plus, it will cost a ton of money that they can invest for fixing the Sicilian road that are very, very in very bad condition. We don't have very good public transportation. So let's see. I hope I hope that uh, they, they they don't. But anyway. Um, hey, that, that that ferry runs pretty well, man. You can bring your car; it doesn't even matter. It, it, easy. Exactly. That's what I say. That's what I say. Keep it the way it is. It's good the way it is. Um, we have anything, Bob? Any more questions that we had to ask anybody? Uh, uh, no, Michael. I just want to. I just want to put up a, a little banner there for for people who are watching who, if they want to contact uh, uh, Francesco about genealogy or Italian citizenship in, in uh, Sicily. Francesco is just that he's one of my up. best friends. He's, I love, the, I love you. I love, he's a great Bob, guy. Bob, <laughs> he's, Bob he's, you don't say that to me, you son of a gun, and I work with you all the time. <laughs> he is great. No, you're, you're not as nice as Francesco. You don't see me that I'm cheating. I give you two. <laughs> you don't feed me, you don't feed me. Exactly. Uh, and, uh, uh, I spelled it wrong, but it's a Giuliana, right? Uh, uh, right, Paolo? Giuliana, right. Yep. Giuliana is a fantastic book. You will feel like you're in Sicily in 1280. It's, it's, it's that good. Congratulations, and, uh, Carlo. Next on my list. Sure. Congratulations. And, uh, Thank you. For people who want to, uh, uh, Michael's got two films out there. La Porta dell'Inferno is the one about the sofa mines, uh, which is, it was super. And then he also has. Uh, what's the what's the name of the Lehman on one, Michael? I, I have no idea. I have no yeah, idea. It's on the fourth. I did turn around. I could be behind me up there. I don't know. Everybody knows it. Ritornato. 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 Uh, so, well, this has been fantastic, guys. It's great stuff. And I think I think the two most important things that to take away for people is if you have not been to your hometown in Italy, you have to go. It is an experience that you'll never forget. And and the other one I think to remember is we've given so much to this country in in, in terms of uh, education and um, art and literature and everything else that we we shouldn't forget that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to uh, any anybody else want to say anything before we close off? Ben Fanti. Uh, just excited to be here, and I'm going to get to Sicily. Uh, I. I swear, I'm getting. What, 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 Jean, where did we find your beautiful art? Jean did a beautiful, oh, uh, yes, red, right. uh, of sulfur miner, beautiful thing. Where can we yeah, find uh, you, Jean? The, thing is, the images just came, and I think it was in my DNA, and then I realized that it was about the sulfur mines. Like, how did that happen? I, I don't know. Um, just my first name, last name, dot com. Jean Benfonti dot com. Jean Benfonti dot com. Yeah. Jerry, how can we? Uh, uh, who wants to get in touch with you? Who cares? But go ahead, Jerry. Anything? No, I don't think anyone's gonna want to get in touch with me. That's okay, but. Um... <laughs> I, I thank you very much for including me in on this uh, to kind of validate what Gene was saying earlier. I learned that my grandfather got a, a free pass to not have to fight in the Italian war. And instead he had to go to the uh, Belgian coal mines. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Very interesting wow. because he was the only child. I got to be honest, guys. Jerry was the first person who contacted me when, when my film was running around. He was one of the first po person that knew exactly what what i was doing so jerry 
Hats off to you, my brother, for loving your family and for the respect you have for your family. Beautiful Thank movie. You. And, and in summary, the, the what I loved about that movie most, and I know you don't see a lot of clips out there at the moment, is the actual people that were working in the mines come back as old men, and they're interviewed in detail, some really intricate detail, and I just found that fascinating. Thank you, Jerry. Manny, Manny and French, Francesca, anything else? Yeah, thank you all for uh, inviting us to this. And uh, everyone there has an open invitation to come to San Francisco. Let me know if you're coming out my way. You can learn more about what we're doing to keep uh, Little Italy North Beach vibrant and alive. We have one of the most vibrant Little Italy's in the United States, and a lot of people don't know about it. But you can look us up at sfiac.org if you want to see what we're doing here in, in San Francisco. And please reach out to me if you, if you guys are coming out. And what about the pizzeria? I, I was trying to get into the pizzeria with you, man. We had to wait on a three-hour line. What's going on? Next time, I want to be on the front of the line. <laughs> Let me know. And you're gonna, we're going to be in the front for sure. All right, man. You're the best. You're the best. Thank you so much. And I can vouch for San Francisco because Manny and Francesca do an amazing job up there. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. And uh, anybody else? Sorrentino, we don't need to say anything. You can just I don't need to say anything, ma'am. Everybody knows me. <laughs>